the infiltrator has finally fallen. Its hyper-alloy combat chassis was much more resistant than before. Our weapons were outmatched. We could barely handle one of them on its own. We won't stand a chance against an army of them. But the real reason the infiltrator was Skynet's best weapon yet was because of its skin. There was no doubt anymore. Skynet had created a cybernetic organism. It was designed to blur the line between a man and a machine. People started to think that there were Terminators amongst us, wolves in sheep's clothes. Some of us left, even though we hadn't seen any other infiltrators yet. Or at least, we didn't think we had. And that fear of not knowing was what turned the tide of this war. That night, Skynet won. Why not get one of those airport scanners? Uh, I still have to run some tests, so f for now I would say no. We need some more time, Connor. Remember its head? Commander, but if there's one person who can help us, it's Dr. Mac. Mac? It, we don't even know if he's alive. He is. He's in the Hollywood Hills. We knew a time would come when we'd need him again, so we've kept an eye on him. Wait. You've been watching him without telling me? Let your emotions cloud your judgment. I decided that Mac's whereabouts were no longer This is bullshit. Concern. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. A man that makes that's mistakes. Enough, you know what happened last time. He's the reason Perry's dead. I said that's enough. Sergeant Rivers? Yes, sir. Techcom believes that being marked for termination is a badge of honor. A sign that we're doing something right. We wear it proudly. And knowing you're wearing such a badge, Rivers, all I need to trust you with handling this mission. Commander Baron will fill you in on the details. Good luck, soldier. Over and out. Looks like you're going to Hollywood Hills. Dr. Edwin Mack is the one who taught us how to use Skynet's weapons, so there's a chance he can do it again. Take him that second generation plasma rifle and see if he's able to reprogram it. If we want to use Skynet's weapons, we need to bypass their encryption lockouts. How will I find him? He's obsessed with surveillance. So when you get there, look for any cameras, biometric sensors, or any other tech stuff. He should be around. That's it. Mm. Did you guys want to chat? After careful analysis, I've come to the conclusion that, under a microscope, the infiltrator's skin is indistinguishable from the human epidermis. They have apparently the same amount of never endings as humans. The skin is covered with hair follicles and sweat glands are functional for all intents and purposes. Is that it? Intents and purposes? I thought it was in intensive purpose. Anyway, for all intents and purposes, the Terminator skin could be categorized as living tissue. It is advised that we learn more about how the skin reacts to various forms of stimuli. Perhaps the results could prove us with an idea on how to distinguish between humans and Terminator. What is even more impressive is its cardiovascular system, or should I say the vascular system, considering the infiltrator does not possess an organic heart. The pumping of blood is carried out by a mechanical circulatory system, which is also responsible for filtering the blood. The cell count is nearly identical to that of humans. Its blood is a form of biofluid and should be handled with care. It is imperative that we avoid contaminating the sample. Okay. Kills? Uh, science? Do we want to do crafting or toughness? For some reason I have in my head that that's just reducing my damage, but surely that's not what it means. Sure, let's trust someone who gets called Dr. Death. That won't bite us in the ass. In the meantime, I'll see what I can learn from the new CPU we acquired from that infiltrator. This could be the breakthrough that we've all been waiting for. I need to concentrate, so please don't disturb me. Okay. And, uh. What do you need? I just wanted to chat. Anything I should know about Dr. Mac? Anything I should know about Dr. Mac before I leave? Only that he can't be trusted and he's highly manipulative. So you need to stay cautious. Was Mac the one whose drone you smashed? Yes. Yes, it was. I've never told this to anyone, but. Before I met Mac and Perry, I was wandering alone. Didn't have a map, so I drew one myself. The first people I came across were two guys, old enough to remember Judgment Day. 
We camped out together. They gave me advice, we shared some stories. Sounds nice, right? I guess. A little too good to be true. See, there are still good people out there. It was still to be to trust. See, there are still good people out there. <laughs> they weren't good. Although, not cutting my throat in my sleep makes them more or less gentlemen. When I woke up, all my things were gone, including my map. Yeah. There I was, lost in the desert. Thirst and hunger. I knew I was going to die. I passed out with my face in the sand. But next thing, I was lying in a bed, bathed and wearing clean clothes. Yeah. You're lucky someone found you. Someone did find me. Too bad it was Skynet. Oh. In the window, I saw thousands of Terminators. First, I thought it was a work camp. But it was something else. A Skynet research facility. They kept me alive, but I didn't know why. I thought I was the only human there. But after a while, someone came into my cell. A man. Well-dressed, clean-shaven. You want to take a guess who that was? One of those guys who robbed you? No. No. Yeah. He was a traitor to his race. The bastard was selling every piece of knowledge the machines didn't have. In return, they gave him everything he wanted. When he was done stuffing his face with food, he had another request. He wanted a whore. It lasted months until I got to wrap a towel around his neck and make his eyes pop. No. You don't want to see people for what they really are. I've seen their true face. That traitor, those two guys in the desert, Mac. They all showed it to me. It's not pretty. The truth is, the only reason I fight for the resistance is because I despise people just a little less than the machines. Oh, well, she was still happy that I questioned her awkwardly. Um, see, I thought she said Mac and what's his name? Perry found it first. But I was arguably not paying enough attention. Jenny, As usual. Do you have a minute? Sure. Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. I know he'd be stupid to go there since now it's behind the annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Weren't you guys already on the other side of the annihilation line? He never talks to anyone. He just sits there. Who? Oh. He's one of those machines. <laughs> dun 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 dun. Jacob. So, what's the situation like in the shelter? What's the situation like in the shelter? Not that great. People are getting nervous. A lot have already left, and even more plan to leave. Even Mark and Laura saw him packing earlier. And what about you? Just the thought of running again is making me sick. Must be getting old. Plus, we got everything we could need right here. Where else would I go? Besides, I have faith that Baron would never let anything happen to this place. She's way too uptight about security. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. Temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. You didn't try to reach home? When did you first hear about Skynet? When did you first hear about Skynet? Oh, that came years later. We did hear some rumors about robot warriors, but you must understand how crazy it sounded back then. And that wasn't even the most insane story out there. My favorite one was about the radioactive squirrel zombies. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, 
but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still had my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're gonna be famous, because we're the only living band in the world. You played in a band? What was your band's name? Well, we were thinking about changing it to Survivors, but something similar was already taken. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. Uh. What did you do? I froze. I didn't run to help. I didn't scream. I didn't even move. I just stood there, like a coward. A tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam! Just like that. Seven other people died before we finally destroyed that thing. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era. Earlier, you said that a new era started. What changed? Well, for one thing, with Tucker dead, I became the new leader of the group. Something I never expected or wanted, for that matter. What did you do? What did you do about it? That same night, I looked around at all those people who survived, and I felt scared. Scared of what they expected of me. I started to walk away like I was on autopilot. I don't know if I wanted to run away or to kill myself, but, but then something surreal happened. I found a metal door in the ground in the middle of nowhere. I was real unsure about what I might find under it, but what I did find was the aftermath of a massacre. And they killed each other? More Terminators? That's exactly what I thought at first, but it turned out to be something even more scary. It looked like they decided to commit suicide. I couldn't understand it. To me, they had everything. Food, water. They even had a case of beer. So, I got shit-faced and started crying over my brother's death. But I realized something. I realized that I could maybe survive there. Uh, did you come back to tell everyone? Did you come back to tell everyone? I did. After I buried the bodies outside, I returned to the camp with the good news. After that, we were all right. That night, I learned two things. Firstly, that it's okay to be scared. Secondly, that there are two sides to everybody. Ironically, me being a scaredy cat turned me into a good leader. And that's how I found that place, and that's what motivated me to help others. But Tucker, he was a leader from the start. But he had an ugly side, too. He killed those who opposed him. He was a real scumbag, but he was my brother. Yeah. He made me want to be a good person for the both of us. Uh, a hangover wasn't a high price to pay for that lesson. His brother was a bloody murderer. I mean, have I killed any people yet in this game? I don't think so. But we need more of this, right? 90. That's pretty good. What? Every time. Now, does anyone in here want to chat? Does the dog just live on that spot? Uh, doctor, doctor? Got any news? No? Well, I'm not loving you. Um, gun guy. Do you need anything? Probably guns? Can I see your hardware? Oh my god, he's got that. What is this? Heat seeker. Do the robots create heat? Is the question. That's a uh, 3k. 3k and not wanna do it like Michael. Eh. 
Should I sell it? No, that's my small caliber. Or do I want to sell all of my small caliber ammo for... What's 330 times 3? 990? Uh, Uzi sell as well? That's 1,000. And then what would I buy? Probably some 9. I mean, I can get them. 2. Did I make this? How did I get that? I'm just leveling up. Oh, med kits. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna have to sell. Need to sell some stuff to get some med kits for me, because that's how it be. Well, I don't use the shotgun. And I don't use the Uzi. I also don't hurt a machine. So really, I shouldn't be using this to kill non... This should be her only terminates, right? Because otherwise I'm just wasting the ammo. Also, I feel like I'm never going to use it. Attempt to improve endurance. Close down time. Increases movement. You know, we'll sell one. Mm. Sell half our ammo. And buy. Do you want to accept? Yes. Um. Jen? You're out? Jacob, I didn't see you there. Uh. Where are you going? I'm going out scavenging. Don't worry. I'm past thinking about running away. I'm good. Knowing how much you'd miss me made me not want to leave. Oh. Where's Patrick? He's getting ready. I'm taking him with me. I figure it's time for him to see what's out there. <coughs> Makes sense. Is everything okay? You seem far away. Nothing can get past you, can it? I've been thinking about the day we met. I never told you how we really ended up there. You can tell me anything. You don't have to do it if you don't want. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I think I need this. It's been eating at me all this time. That day, loud hammering woke me up. When I came downstairs, I saw my father nailing the window shut. Through the crack, I saw them coming. Hundreds of metal heads and their red eyes. Even though they're just empty shells, I could feel the hate radiating from them. What did you do? What did you do? I made Patrick stay upstairs and went back to talk to my father. We argued for a minute or two and I tried to pull him away from the window. He pushed me away. I tried it again, but he shoved me. This time I fell. <coughs> I didn't recognize him as he was reaching for his shotgun. He said, I shouldn't worry about the machines. They wouldn't hurt us. I don't even remember how. But the gun was already in my hands. I closed my eyes and went someplace else. I didn't even hear the shot. I didn't hear Patrick's steps either. <sighs> he saw you? He saw you? He did. He was staring at me like I was a stranger. He didn't scream or cry. He just stared. Is that why he didn't want to go with you? He away, grabbed Patrick, and tried not to notice the hole in my father's unmoving chest. As we ran, I could hear them coming, so we found somewhere to hide. Then you came. I wanted to tell someone about all this, but I was afraid to. I'm glad you did. You don't have to be afraid. I'm glad you did. I am too. We talk a lot about how heartless the machines are. And I started to think that maybe I was too. I probably would have convinced myself of that if it wasn't for you keeping me sane. Thank you for everything. I never thought I would find a friend in times like these. You're welcome. Is it, is it, is it true? Are you a human now? Yeah, it is. With the dog.